This is Mr. Smith, and today I'm going to show you how to make a quick movie poster for our film festival. Now, this is a tutorial that is meant for our media arts students. It's going to cut a lot of corners. It's going to have some things that are not considered best practices for real movie posters, but that just means that if this doesn't relate to you, then you're not our target audience. So, apologies. Maybe you'll get something useful out of it. If you do, awesome. So, first thing we need is, you've been working on your film festival video for a while. That's great. Find a shot in your video that you think best shows what you want your audience to get out of. Is it going to be a creepy movie? Well, then find a scene that's kind of creepy, with, but not spoilery. If it is a more dramatic movie, then have a screen capture that's very high drama, maybe with two people facing off against each other, not throwing punches. This is a school video, but still, you get the idea. To take a screen capture, the print screen key on your keyboard works pretty well. There's also the snippet tool, but however you get that screen capture, you're going to have a copy of it, and I can right-click on this and copy because this is a screen capture I took earlier. And then go into a program called Inkscape. You can use other programs. I like using Inkscape. It's installed on most of the computers. And it's free, so you can install it on your home computer with your parents' permission. And in here, I can right-click and I can hit Paste, or I can press Control and V. And either way, I end up with my image. Now, I need to resize this because this doesn't fit well. But before I resize it, I need to make sure that my page size in this is correct. By default, this border here is wrong because we're going to be printing this out on 8.5 by 11 paper. That is not ideal for real movie posters. For that, we'd be printing out 24 by 36 inches, which is huge, but that's what movie posters are. They're trying to be eye-catching, getting your attention, and we don't have a printer that prints that high. So we can't do that. We can't even do half sheet, which is 22 by 28, which is also pretty awesome, but also not half, but that's what they call it, whatever. So we're doing 8.5 by 11. To get your page border to be 8.5 by 11, you go up to File, you go down to Document Properties. If you skip this step, you're going to have a bad day. Make sure you click on U.S. Letter. Everything else adjusts for you automatically. If you want it to be a landscape picture, you can do that. It's frowned upon. It's not best practices, but I'll print it out. It's fine for what we're using it for. I'm going to go portrait because that's what standard is for movie posters. Now, down at the bottom, you also have an option for having the border show up on top of your drawing. That is really important for you to check. Otherwise, you're not going to know where your page ends. With this not checked... When you put this picture here, you're not going to see where the page ends, so your text is not going to line up the way you want it to. And when everything gets printed, it's going to look bad, like you didn't pay attention to what you were doing. And that's not work that you want to show to your classmates, I am sure. So make sure that box is checked. So now this is the right size. We can make sure this image is the right size, and that's really going to depend on what your screen capture is. Now I centered this more or less. Maybe I'd actually want it to be over here, so I'm only showing half of my face. Maybe I want to be nice to my audience and not show any of my face. What you show in your image is going to depend on what the image is and what you're trying to convey without being too spoilery. I went with this. You might go with something else. Then it's time for the text. Now, what I did for the text is I found one font that I liked, and I used it for everything. I used it over here, in fact. So all of this was made with the same font. I used the text tool to add it in, I typed everything out, and then I went in and selected it, and I picked a font that I liked from my list. Your font list is going to be different from mine. I'm on a different computer. These are the computer fonts. These are not universal fonts. I went and made my text bold because I wanted it to be bold. Once I had things the way I wanted them to be, I typed out my title, and then... I duplicated it. Control D duplicates. There's also something up here in edit where you can do that. And now I've got two copies and I drug the next copy where I wanted it to be. I resized it if I wanted the text to be smaller, but there was a lot of duplication because why reinvent the wheel? And if they're all the same font, it still looks like it all belongs together. Now, 
very important when you're typing. One thing is, type in all caps. It's not required that you type in all caps, but when you do, you don't have to worry about whether or not you're accidentally typing a lowercase letter where it should be an uppercase letter, and should the be capitalized in this instance, and all that kind of stuff. Just type in all caps, and people will forget any mistakes unless you spell something wrong. There is no spell checker built into Inkscape. That is a bit of a problem. So you know what I do, honestly? If I don't know how to spell a word, I Google it. It's that simple. If I spell it wrong, Google asks, did you mean this? And it gives me the correct spelling. So seriously, Google's your friend. Use it. Additionally, you might notice there's a bit of a border in here. If I hold down Control and I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out. So you see this border here? That could help make the text pop out a little bit more. I did the opposite down here where it's a black border with green text. That green is the same green as my background. I picked something in my photo so that the text sort of fit along with everything else. Now, to get that, it is super easy if you know how. First, you need the fill and stroke menu to be open. There's two ways that I go about doing it. One is shift control and F if you hold down control and shift at the same time and you tap F this will pop up however if you go down here where it says fill right where it says NA for you it might have a color if you have something selected if you double click there this will also pop up you could also go up here but I never bothered to because those two ways are faster now if you have something selected you have three tabs that you can mess with the first is fill that's the color in the middle you may have before changed the fill color by clicking on any of the wonderful little color swatches that are down here. That is wonderful in a pinch. I use that all the time. But if there is a color that you want to copy exactly that isn't in this swatch or it's hard to find, or maybe you used it before and you're having trouble finding it again, if you use this little eyedropper tool here and then you click on the color you want to copy, it will copy it exactly. It moves all these sliders exactly where they need to be. Simple. Wonderful. Now, additionally, stroke, that is the line around the outside. By default, it will probably be off for you, which for some text is fine. But now it's really hard to see this part of the N in in because it is against a part of my hair that's actually kind of dark and not turning gray or white as the rest of it is. So I go to the stroke tab, which again, I got this by going to fill and stroke by double clicking down here or pressing shift control F. And I click on this first box here. It says flat color. You got other things here you can play with. This is a quick and simple tutorial. So play with them at your own convenience. And if I want to copy a color for that border, I use this color picker in this tab, and I click on the color I want to copy. That looks horrible. I'm control z that horrible stuff away. But now you know how to do that. Stroke style, this is just a bunch of things, but the part I mess with the most in this tab is the width. How thick is that stroke line going around? I usually set this to pixels. I find that it's easier for me to control doing that. There's no hard rule for which of these you need to use. Use whichever one of them you think works best. So I can set this to five. And if I'm happy with that, that's great. If I think that's too thick, I can make the number be smaller. If I think it's too thin, I can make the number be larger. It is quite possible to make it be too thick. That looks bad. Let's go back to what it was before. It's almost like I prepared this ahead of time, and I'm only making things worse by changing things. Now, down here, I did the exact same thing, but I reversed it. So I had my stroke color be my fill color and my fill color be my stroke color exact opposite of what was up here. I picked the colors the same way, so I don't need to show you that again. I did have all this text be smaller because the title was the most important part. We're getting everyone's attention to say, hey, this is the name of the movie. And down here are all the details. And now we've got your attention. It's starring Mr. Smith and his evil twin, who is his last name spelled backwards because this is a fake poster anyway. I'm not going to subject you to a real movie about just me. That'd be incredibly boring. The date of the show, the time of the show, and the price of the show, which is kind of important. So no one shows up at the door and says, no one told me it was $5. Yes, we did. It was on the poster. Now, you've got your poster. You're happy with it. You're done. No, you're not. You can and should go to file and save your work, but that won't help you getting it printed, unfortunately. 
because remember I said that all those fonts that we saw up here were on this computer? This computer doesn't have every font in existence. And your computer has a different set of fonts than this computer does. This computer has a bunch of Linux fonts. I guarantee you, unless you're using a Linux machine, you're not going to see these fonts on your computer. So what does that mean? Well, if you send me your Inkscape project, and I open it up, and you used a font that I don't have on here, I'm not going to see these letters in that font. It's going to be a different font. And when you change fonts, it changes the size of the text, it changes the thickness of the text, it changes the length of the text, it changes all kinds of things. Now you can see that looks different. It's no longer centered. It looks, some would argue worse, some would argue better. I'm going to say worse because it doesn't fit with everything else. That's a personal opinion. Point is, it's not going to look the way you designed it. It's going to look the way my computer thought it should be designed. Computers are not very bright when it comes to thinking of things like that. So, how do you make sure that I see your vision and what you are making? Well, you need to go to the export window. To get to this, it's really hard. You go to File and you click on Export. It might say Export Bitmap. It might say Export PNG. It's the same thing in different versions of Inkscape. These settings haven't changed so much between the versions. By default, it's not going to click on page because you've clicked on something else. In this case, it's defaulting to drawing. Well, that means when I export a bitmap, it's going to export everything, including this down here, including this over here, and that's going to be a hot mess. It's going to include all this extra stuff that I want to cropped off. We don't want that. Sometimes it defaults to selection. It would be whatever you clicked on, it's going to export just that thing, which again, is it going to look very good? So make sure you click on page. You took the effort to go to file and document properties and make sure it was 8.5 by 11. You want it to be page because otherwise, why would you do that other work? The rest of these things you don't need to change if you checked page. File name, you probably will want to change. You click export as, you tell it where you want to save it to and what you want to name it. I decided to name my movie poster. You might want to name yourself something else. That doesn't export it though. This tells it what you want to name it when you export. To export it, you are going to have to go down and click on the button that says export. And then you might see a scroll bar up here, depending on how large your image is, that goes across saying, hey, we're exporting. And at that point, in the spot where you said to save your file, you will see an 8.5 by 11 image of your movie poster that ends in a .png suffix, if you can see the suffix. It will not be an Inkscape file. Double-clicking on it will not open it up automatically in Inkscape or Explorer or Chrome or whatever your default SVG file opener is. It'll open in an image viewing program. And that's a file that you can send to a printer or hand in to Mr. Smith or Ms. Jeter or however you're getting it printed so we can hang it up around the building. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.